Welcome back, art friends. This week, all five lessons are gonna be on the art of Alexander Calder. He's one of my favorite artists, born over 100 years ago in Pennsylvania. Both of his parents, mom and dad, were artists, and so it seems kind of natural that he would become one too. He was very interested in art. But his art started out a little different. He wasn't painting right away. He started out making art with wood. And see, it looks like a little toy, like a little pole toy. Doesn't that look fun? Oh my goodness. But then he kind of started moving away from wood and started using metal. And he is most well known as the inventor of the mobile. Can you see this? So I have this little hanging thing that I made out of pipe cleaners. We're gonna make this later this week. So a mobile is a piece of art that moves. And some people call it mobile. I call it always a mobile. I don't know if that's correct or not, but that's how I say it because it moves. Mobiles move. Um, he's also known um, for creating sculptures called stabiles and those stay they still look like they would move but they stay and so i'll show you that too so he's the inventor of the mobile he's the inventor of some that just fell on my coffee can you believe it can you see these pictures see that cute fish that's the one we're gonna make this week all right maybe you want to try to make one of these you can look them up um, here, here's one of his sculptures, right? Aren't they cool? They look like dinosaurs or something. I don't know. A little bit abstract. Remember we talked about abstract means, um, it doesn't have to look like anything. So we are going to make a stable to this week. We are going to make a mobile this week and we are going to do some other paper um, art that looks a lot like some of his paintings. All right, so we have lots to do this week. He's, his art's going to keep us very busy. So today we're going to start easy with just paper, black crayon, and if you have it, some paints. And I picked three colors that he's known for using quite a bit. Anybody remember what these are called? Yes, the primary. Oh, there are three primary colors, right? So we're gonna use a black crayon, some paint. You're gonna need a brush. And if you don't have paint or a paintbrush, don't say, oh, forget it, I'm not gonna watch this video. Come on, give it a try. We are going to um, also be clever. We could use crayons to finish it. We could use marker or even colored pencil. So you don't have to have paint to do any of these projects, okay? So press pause and grab your supplies. All right, welcome back. So we are gonna do this super easy because we're just getting started with his art um, painting today. So we're gonna start out with some real organic shapes and lines. We don't want them to be computer looking. They're not going to be perfect. I'm not going to use a stencil. I'm just going to use my own hand. And for the first line, we're going to start at the bottom of the page. We're going to come up and around and kind of make a swirl. Doesn't that look like a fun shape? So we're going to start at the bottom of the page, up and I'm gonna push kind of hard. Remember, I'm on an easel. If I'd be on my table, I would try to really give it some muscle. All right, it's good for your hand and it's nice. It gives your line nice dark contrast against the paper, All right? So this is our first line. It almost looks like something Dr. Seuss would make, right? Right now we're gonna make another one right next to it and it's gonna follow. So wherever this line goes, our next line is going to follow 
but a little bit apart. Not really social distancing, just a little bit apart, okay? We're not gonna be too far apart, not on this paper, all right? It's gonna follow, and when it gets to the end, we're gonna let them connect. Now it looks like a little worm, right? Kinda does, doesn't it? So a little twirl, a little worm. And then I'm gonna do that again. And I'm gonna follow the same line. And this time, it's just gonna kinda dead end in the, right at the edge of that, all right? So I have two of those. And if you want, you could do it one more time. It's up to you. I kinda have a lot of space, so I think I will. That's up to you. You're the artist, you have to make those decisions, right? There we go. So now I kinda have those three tubes ready. So we have our swirls on the page. Next, we're gonna draw some rays, some straight lines out like the sun. And I don't know, I'm gonna start at this curve and I'm gonna go down off the page off the page and see I'm not making it straight I'm kind of making it like a sunshine right these are kind of angled out but you can decide so I have one two three I'm gonna go around a little farther apart than my twirls and I'm gonna go around until I get to here so it's almost like that's shining all right and the last thing I'm gonna add, so we have our twirls, our curvy lines, we have our straight lines, and now we're gonna add some organic kind of circle blob shapes, whatever you wanna call them, maybe jelly beans or something. And I'm gonna use this space out here for that, maybe this bigger space, I might, I might add one, or a little one over there. But I'm gonna make one over here, and one going off the page, and maybe a smaller one up top. So you can decide. So we have some organic shapes, they're just whatever. We have our twirls and we have our rays. And I'm gonna sign it now before I get the paints out, okay? So find a good tricky spot here, maybe, maybe in this little curve here, I'll put mine. I wonder where you're gonna put yours. All right, so I signed it and now it's ready for some paint. All right, Alexander, if you remembered from the picture I just showed you, oftentimes Mrs. Icor says, I don't wanna see any weight. I want you to keep the whole page colored. But he doesn't do that. He leaves a little white, he really did. So we're gonna kinda of go with that style today. And we're gonna use primary colors and leave a little white. So I'm gonna start with my lightest color. Um, and let's see, I think I'm gonna make my very first twirl yellow. All right, we'll do that. The first, very first one is yellow. And that doesn't take any time at all. If you're using crayon, that's pretty fast too, or marker. You might need a little, and don't worry if you go a little bit outside the lines, it doesn't matter. All right. That's nice. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my brush, and now I'm gonna see where should I put the red? Maybe right one space away. Maybe I'll make this one red. So, so you kind of have to make these decisions as you go. You could plan it if you wanted to on another paper, but I'm just gonna go for it because I'm pretty sure it'll be fun no matter what we do, right? All right, boys and girls. So we're gonna finish this up kind of quickly. I'm just gonna decide, and I hope you're painting or drawing or coloring right alongside me. If I ever go too fast, of course, um, you can stop the video, but I don't want this part of it to be just like mine. I want it to be just like yours. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. 
I'm going to add a few of these rays. Notice I'm using kind of all the same color at the same time. I'm not going back and forth so much because it's better for me and my brush if I'm not going back and forth. So it's a little bit quicker for you too at home watching me. So I just kind of look around and think, hmm, where do I want another? Hmm, maybe here. All right, and if you have watercolor and you don't have um, the tempera paints, that would be fun too. And it will stay in place because you use crayon as your black, right? All right, a little bit of blue. And just so you know, I always dry my brush after I wash it for temper paint because I don't want the paint to get too runny. But for watercolor, always keep your brush wet. Right, boys and girls? You want that nice um, water on your paints. It makes the paint so happy. All right. All right, so there's that guy. We're going to make this guy. Blue. Hmm. Maybe I'll just make all my circles in fun little shapes blue. And voila. Kind of looks like Calder, doesn't it? All right. So then I could go back and say, hmm. What do I need? Maybe I want to add a little black. Maybe I'll make this one in the middle here black because he had black, white, and his colors. He had a lot of um, contrast. It kind of pops, right? And I have a couple. Let me see. If, oh, yeah, I saved them. This one my friend Lexi made. Isn't it beautiful? So we have all kinds of examples. And let's see, this one, I didn't leave any white and I kind of regret it. After I studied him a little bit more, I thought, hey, he left white. So see, I'm learning, I keep learning too. I keep studying these artists and I hope you are too. And you find something that you really enjoy. And if you're like, oh, I don't like this so much, come back tomorrow, we are going to Let's see, tomorrow we're gonna do a little bit different one. We're gonna use paper um, to create something similar to this, not the same. We're gonna use paper and Wednesday already, we're gonna start working on our fish. So you can already start getting your supplies, pipe cleaners and maybe some beads. Um, talk to your parents, see if there's something else that you might be able to use if you don't have those supplies, maybe a straw, we'll see. All right, maybe strings, yarn, you'll have to think about it. All right, I'm going to finish mine, you finish yours, and I'll see you back tomorrow. All right, bye-bye, boys and girls. Miss you.